Navigating the world's oceans is a challenging risk, and even with modern technology, ship collisions and mistakes still happen, from colossal vessels colliding in busy ports to unfortunate navigational errors in treacherous waters. These incidents are a testament to the complexity and risks of maritime industry. Join me for today's video. I'm counting down the top 15 biggest ship collisions and mistakes. Starting with number 15, the bulk carrier Wakashio. July 25, 2020, the Japanese-owned bulk carrier Wakashio, en route from China to Brazil, ran aground on a coral reef off the coast of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. The ship was carrying over 4,000 tons of fuel oil. Initially, the ship remained intact, but efforts to refloat it were unsuccessful, and cracks began to appear in its hull. On August 6, the vessel started to leak oil into the marine environment, threatening the rich biodiversity of the region. This was a bad one. Efforts to contain the oil spill were hampered by the remote location and sheer scale of the disaster. Local volunteers, environmental organizations, and government authorities mobilized to minimize the ecological impact, but the spill had already caused significant damage to coral reefs, mangrove forests, and protected marine species. The disaster had severe repercussions on the local fishing and tourism industries, which relied heavily on the pristine beauty of the affected area. The spill also posed a threat to the livelihoods of the coastal communities, with the potential long-term effects on the region's ecosystem still under assessment. How did all this happen? Well, the vessel deviated from its regular shipping lane to approach closer to the coast in search of a stronger internet connection. Yeah, that's right, an internet connection. This reckless maneuvering led to the ship's grounding on the coral reef, resulting in the subsequent oil spill. Number 14. Grand Rodosi vs. Apollo S On October 8, 2010, chaos unfolded in the waters of Port Lincoln, South Australia, as the imposing 225-meter grain ship Grand Rodosi clashed with the 47-meter Australian fishing vessel Apollo. With the Grand Rodosi barreling in at five knots, the impact was akin to a force of nature, violently crushing Apollo's port side against the unyielding wharf, rendering it helpless. Within a mere half hour, the once proud Apollo, valued at a staggering $20 million, succumbed to the relentless embrace of the ocean's depths, leaving only memories in its wake. Meanwhile, the hulking Grand Rodosi bore a testament to the chaos with a gaping wound in its hull, a grim reminder of the havoc it wrought. Further adding to the tally of destruction, six fenders on the wharf stood battered and broken from the magnitude of the impact. Well, how does something like this happen? Well, an investigation found that despite the pilot ordering a stern movements, the ship's main engine did not respond. The chief engineer didn't allow sufficient time for the starting air to stop the ahead running engine. Consequently, when the fuel was introduced into the engine, it continued to run ahead despite the astern telegraph orders. The investigation also found that the chief engineer's mistake wasn't noticed on the ship's bridge or in the engine control room until after the collision. Number 13. The Golden Ray The Golden Ray cargo ship incident, which took place on September 8, 2019, near St. Simon's Sound in Brunswick, Georgia, captured global attention due to its rescue operations and subsequent salvage efforts. The Golden Ray, a 650-foot vehicle carrier, encountered a critically stable issue shortly after departing from the port of Brunswick. As a result, the vessel listed heavily on its port side, leading to a partial capsize in the shipping channel. Now, at the time of the incident, the ship was transporting about 4,200 vehicles in its hold. While the entire crew was successfully rescued, the precarious positioning of the vessel posed a challenge for salvage teams. Efforts to stabilize and ultimately remove the ship were intricate and protracted, requiring specialized equipment and the expertise of seasoned salvage professionals. And over the course of the salvage operation, which extended for more than a year, a complex approach was employed, involving the construction of a specially designed environmental barrier to contain any pollutants that might have leaked. Multiple tugboats, cranes, and other heavy machinery were also utilized to gradually dismantle the Golden Ray and remove it in sections, ensuring minimal disruption to the surrounding ecosystem. Number 12. Carnival Glory the Carnival Glory incident unfolded on December 20th, 2019, as the massive cruise ship was preparing to depart from Mexico. A routine cruise was interrupted by an unexpected turn of events that led to a collision with the Carnival legend. The crash, which went down in the early hours of the morning, was initially attributed to strong currents and challenging weather conditions in the area, a factor that caught even seasoned crew members off guard. As the Carnival Glory's stern unexpectedly slammed into the Carnival legend, 
Passengers and crew on both ships were jolted from their routines, startled by the sudden chaos. Although no passengers suffered injuries during the collision, the structural damage to both vessels was substantial, evoking concerns regarding the cruise line's safety protocols. Many questioned how such a collision, occurring within a fleet known for its stringent safety, could have transpired. As always, in the aftermath of the incident, comprehensive investigations were launched to unravel the event. Experts delved into a myriad of potential factors, including navigational miscalculations, environmental challenges, communication lapses, and adherence to established safety protocols. Fortunately, no one was hurt. However, the Carnival Glory incident served as a sobering reminder of the potential risks inherent in maritime travel and the sheer power of Mother Nature versus human engineering. Number 11. The Prestige Oil Spill now, despite the name, this big ship's mistake is anything but prestigious. The Prestige Oil Spill, one of the most catastrophic environmental disasters in recent history, happened on November 13, 2002, off the coast of Galicia in Spain. The incident was triggered when the oil tanker Prestige suffered structural damage during a severe storm. The ship, carrying over 77,000 metric tons of heavy fuel oil, was thrust into one bad situation after the next, and its hull was compromised by pounding of the waves. As the vessel's structural integrity gave way, it ultimately split in half, releasing an unprecedented deluge of oil into the Atlantic Ocean. The consequences of the spill were devastating, with the oil quickly spreading across the region's coastlines, causing significant ecological damage and endangering marine life. The spill's impact was felt not only on the local environment, but also on the fishing and tourism industries, upon which many communities depended for their livelihoods. The whole situation was just awful. The cleanup efforts that followed were a challenge, as experts and volunteers grappled with the enormity of the task. They tried using dispersants, skimmers, and controlled burns to mitigate the ecological impact and prevent the oil from further infiltrating the coastal ecosystems. However, despite the concerted efforts, the cleanup process was painstaking and prolonged, with remnants of the oil spill continuing to leave a lasting imprint on the affected areas for years to come. The aftermath of the prestige oil spill spurred widespread outrage and calls for stringent maritime safety regulations and protocols to prevent similar disasters in the future. It prompted re-evaluation of shipping practices, emphasizing the importance of rigorous inspections, robust safety measures, and comprehensive emergency response plans. And while they certainly tried, plenty of oil spills have still happened since then. Number 10. Sea Diamond Cruise Ship on a tranquil spring afternoon, April 5, 2007, the Sea Diamond cruise ship encountered an unexpected fate off the coast of Santorini in Greece. Despite the area's well-marked volcanic reef, the vessel found itself in distress, taking on water and listing up to a nerve-wracking 12-degree tilt to starboard. Amid the chaos, the ship's watertight doors were reportedly secured, initially giving hope for containment. Over a thousand passengers, predominantly Americans and Canadians, were swiftly evacuated, with some undertaking daring escapes down rope ladders and others making their way to safety through the former car deck onto waiting boats. Though the ship was eventually towed off the treacherous rocks, it was a precarious situation, teetering on the brink of a deeper fate. As night fell, the situation took a darker turn, with the ship sinking a mere few hundred meters from the shore. Heart-wrenching video footage captured the vessel capsizing and settling stern first onto the sea floor, its once grand structure succumbing to the forces below. Amid fears of an impending environmental disaster, efforts were launched to salvage the ship's fuel, preventing a potential oil spill that could have ravaged the surroundings. While the legal aftermath brought penalties for the owners and operators, the true human cost remained evident in the lawsuit filed by passengers seeking justice for the harrowing ordeal they endured. After a lengthy legal battle spanning six years, the captain of the ill-fated vessel, along with an employee from an insurance company, faced the weight of justice, receiving significant jail sentences. The saga of the Sea Diamond remains a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between human adventure and the untamed forces of the natural world, leaving a mark on the annals of maritime history. Number 9. Alanis and Florence Spirit in a striking twist on the waters of Ontario's Welland Canal, two bulk carriers aptly named Alanis and Florence Spirit found themselves in a head-on collision that jolted the industry. The clash, which happened on July 11, 2020 near Port Robinson, unveiled a slow-speed drama that left Alanis with its cargo of wind turbine parts bound for Duluth, Minnesota, facing off against Florence Spirit, loaded with coal en route to Quebec City. 
Fortunately, no injuries or environmental mishaps were reported, but the aftermath left a puzzle that investigators were determined to decipher. Video snippets capturing moments leading up to the collision depicted Florence Spirit seemingly veering off course, cutting in front of Atlantis and initiating the ill-fated encounter. The impact left both vessels scarred, their hulls bearing the visible wounds of the unexpected tango. Transport Canada, assisted by the Transportation Safety Board of Canada, spearheaded the inquiry into the incident, aiming to untangle the complexities behind the clash. While specifics of the collision remain shrouded, the usual routine of ship passages in the area cast a shadow of bewilderment on the investigation. The Welland Canal, a vital link within the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Seaway system, witnessed a momentary disruption as Atlantis pushed ahead to Fort Colborne for a thorough checkup, while Florence Spirit navigated under its own power to a nearby berth. The repercussions of the collision served as a reminder of the delicate dance of coordination required to ensure seamless maritime transit in the region. Thankfully, in this friendly and slow Canadian incident, no one was hurt and nothing spilled into the water that would contaminate the environment. A mistake? Sure. A collision? Absolutely. But when it comes to an event such as this, this is the best possible outcome. Number 8. MV Arvin the MV Arvin was a cargo ship with a history as turbulent as the waters that consumed it, eventually meeting a tragic end. Originally built in 1975, the vessel went through various changes in ownership and operation over the years. It was flagged in both Turkey and Tanzania at different points in history, and the ship was involved in several maritime incidents, including collisions and groundings, which raised concerns about its safety record and seaworthiness. This specific class of tanker, the Vogel Balt class, were lake and river freighters meant to sail within the generally calm water and were not intended for the high seas. Nevertheless, many of them have been seen on use around the Black Sea, which is notorious for its deadly waters. Several have sunk on the Black Sea over the years, including the Vogel Balt 214 lost in 2019. Just two months later, the Vogel Balt 179 sank. On January 17, 2021, the MV Arvin faced its final and most devastating challenge when it encountered stormy weather conditions in the Aegean Sea. Battling fierce winds and rough waves, the ship eventually ran aground near the town of Seal on the coast of Turkey. The grounding led to the vessel breaking into pieces, with a significant portion of the wreck remaining visible above the waterline. Tragically, the incident resulted in the loss of several crew members' lives, while others were rescued by Turkish authorities in a daring and challenging operation amidst adverse weather. The ship's tragic end prompted investigations into the circumstances surrounding the grounding, with authorities focusing on potential factors such as adverse weather conditions, navigational errors, and the overall condition of the vessel. This incident underscored the critical need for comprehensive safety regulations within the maritime industry to ensure the well-being of seafarers and the protection of marine environments. Moving on to number 7, the Carnival Triumph Breakaway. All right, get ready for the wild tale of high winds, broken bollards, and a drifting cruise ship that turned the port of Mobile into a temporary carnival of chaos. In April 2013, the Carnival Triumph, fresh from its Gulf of Mexico power outage saga, found itself moored for repairs at the BAE System Shipyard in Mobile, Alabama. Little did anyone expect the easy breezy to turn into maritime mayhem. On an extra windy afternoon, April 3, 2013, with winds hitting a whopping and whooshing 65 miles an hour, suddenly the Carnival Triumph decided it was time for a spontaneous river cruise. Breaking free from its moorings, this mighty ship, as if operating on its own, went for an unexpected river rendezvous, inadvertently bumping into the moored dredge wheeler and even squeezing in a playful hug with the noon Wednesday towing vessel. Amidst the blustery commotion, unfortunately one shipyard hero lost their footing and another got a bit of a bruise, though not directly from the Carnival Triumph's mischievous escapade. The collision itself was a relatively tame one compared to many of the others we've seen today, but it still ran up more than $2.5 million in damages, with the Wheeler and the Noon Wednesday bearing the brunt of the ship's impromptu river gangway. As always, an investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board immediately began, and they quickly uncovered a tale of neglect. Simply put, BAE Systems was apparently aware of the wobbly condition of the mooring bollards long before the Carnival Triumph decided to show off its river navigation skills. Despite a prior report flagging the poor state of Pier K, where the ship was tied, BAE Systems missed the memo and skipped the necessary engineering analysis, leaving the bollards in less than ideal state for a ship's impromptu river escapade. 
Sure, we can chalk this up to high winds, but this is a great reminder that all it takes is an ounce of human error to ruin the day. Number 6. The Stellar Banner The MV Stellar Banner, a massive, very large ore carrier, embarked on its maiden voyage from the Ponta de Madeira Maritime Terminal in Brazil. With a length of 340 meters and a capacity exceeding 300,000 deadweight tons, the vessel was a crucial player in the transportation of iron ore from Brazil to various international markets. However, the fate of the Stellar Banner took an ominous turn in February of 2020 when the vessel, laden with a substantial cargo of iron ore, encountered a series of distressing events off the coast of São Luís, Brazil. Amid these difficulties, the ship began to list, prompting immediate concerns about its stability and safety. Efforts to rectify the situation proved challenging, as the vessel's precarious state posed significant risks to the environment and maritime operations. The situation necessitated the urgent evacuation of the crew, ensuring their safety as salvage teams endeavored to find a solution to prevent a potential maritime disaster. Despite all the attempts to stabilize the listing vessel, authorities faced the daunting reality that salvaging the Stellar Banner might not be feasible. With careful consideration of the potential environmental impact and the safety risks posed by the unstable ship, the decision was made to deliberately sink the vessel in a controlled way. The deliberate sinking of the Stellar Banner marked the end of the vessel's journey as it descended into the depths, carrying with it the remnants of a once mighty carrier. In the aftermath of the incident, investigations were conducted to determine the root cause of the vessel's destabilization and subsequent sinking. Additionally, efforts were made to assess any environmental impacts and to initiate necessary measures for mitigating potential ecological consequences. Number 5. The Costco Busan The MV Costco Busan, a colossal container ship measuring over 900 feet in length, was en route to the port of Oakland from Yantian, China, when a fateful incident unfolded on the morning of November 7, 2007. As the vessel navigated through the dense fog in San Francisco Bay, it collided with the Bay Bridge, setting off a chain of events that would reverberate across the region for years. At approximately 8.30 a.m., the ship's forward starboard side struck the Delta Tower of the Bay Bridge, resulting in a gash in the vessel's hull and a catastrophic spill of over 50,000 gallons of heavy fuel oil into the bay's waters. The collision not only led to an immediate environmental crisis, but also caused a temporary shutdown of the vital shipping artery, disrupting maritime traffic and triggering a massive emergency response. Amid the chaotic aftermath, the spill quickly spread across the bay, coating nearby shorelines, beaches, and wildlife in a thick, noxious sludge. The delicate marine ecosystem of the area faced a grave threat as hundreds of birds and marine animals became ensnared in this toxic slick. The ensuing response involved a multi-agency effort, with the U.S. Coast Guard, local authorities, and environmental organizations mobilizing resources to contain the spill. As containment booms were deployed to curb the spread of the fuel, cleanup crews worked tirelessly to remove the oily residue from affected shorelines and rescue any distressed wildlife. While the incident triggered a wave of public outcry and scrutiny, it also prompted a comprehensive reassessment of safety protocols and navigational practices in the bay. The aftermath of the Busan spill brought about a protracted legal battle, too, with the ship's operating company facing substantial fines and penalties. The total cost of the incident, including environmental damages, cleanup efforts, and legal proceedings, amounted to an estimated $70 million, leaving a mark on the collective consciousness of the San Francisco Bay Area. As the region gradually recovered from the environmental and economic repercussions of the disaster, the legacy of the Costco Buran served as a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between marine commerce and the preservation of our precious natural ecosystems. Number 4. The USS John S. McCain The USS John S. McCain, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer and stalwart of the U.S. Navy's Pacific Fleet, found itself at the center of a dramatic maritime mishap on the early morning of August 21, 2017. While navigating the busy waters near Singapore's Strait of Malacca, the warship collided with the Liberian-flagged oil tanker Alnick MC, setting off a sequence of events that would test the resilience of the ship and its crew. At 5.24 a.m., the collision between the 500-foot-long destroyer and the 600-foot-long tanker happened, leaving a gaping hole in the McCain's port side and resulting in flooding in the crew compartments and the ship's communication room. After it all went down, a frantic and exhaustive search and rescue operation was launched to locate any missing crew members and provide medical assistance to the wounded. 
Now, naturally, the incident triggered a comprehensive investigation to determine the root causes, with the focus on potential navigation errors and the adherence to maritime safety protocols. The findings highlighted the critical need for enhanced training and operational preparedness to mitigate any risks associated with high-intensity naval operations in busy shipping lanes. This wasn't a cheap event either, as the USS Jonas McCain underwent extensive repairs and restoration. The financial toll of the collision, including the costs of recovery operations, vessel repairs, and legal proceedings, amounted to a staggering $72 million. The incident served as a sobering reminder of the dangers inherent in maritime operations. The ship was under repair for well over a year. In the end, the investigation proved that an overly complex touchscreen system used for throttle control and training deficiencies had contributed to a loss of control of the ship just before it crossed paths with a merchant ship in the Singapore Strait, prompting a decision by the Navy to revert ships of this class to mechanical throttle controls fleet-wide. Number 3. Ulysses and CSL Virginia in the wee hours of a Sunday morning roughly 17 miles north of Cape Corsica, a maritime collision unfolded in the Mediterranean Sea. The Roro ferry Ulysses, operated by CTN Tunisia Ferries, was en route from Genoa, Italy to Redes, Tunisia. At the same time, the CSL Virginia, a container ship, was reportedly anchored when the collision happened. The impact resulted in the Ulysses bow becoming wedged deep into the hull of the CSL Virginia, causing a significant breach and a subsequent leak of nearly 500 cubic meters of heavy fuel oil. The spill created an oil slick that extended for over 15 miles, triggering a comprehensive anti-pollution response spearheaded by the French and Italian authorities. Efforts to separate the vessels were initially hampered, but on Thursday evening they finally came apart due to a combination of wave action and coordinated disengagement efforts. Despite the separation, the aftermath of the collision revealed extensive damage to both vessels, estimated at a staggering 13.5 million euros. Additionally, the cleanup costs were projected to reach approximately 10 million euros, underscoring the comprehensive nature of the recovery operation. The investigation into the collision shed light on critical errors and lapses in judgment on the part of both vessels' crews. The inquiry highlighted the absence of proper vigilance and adherence to safety protocols, with the Ulysses captain reportedly preoccupied with personal phone calls, far from the radar screen that could have averted this disaster. It should go without saying that being on the phone while driving is a big no-no, but the collision between these two vessels proves that being on the phone while being behind the wheel of a shipping vessel is just as bad. Forget texting and driving, don't text in boat. Number 2. MV Tricolor Collision The MV Tricolor was built in 1987 by a Norwegian shipyard, Kaverner Varnal Werft, in Germany. Operated by Vil Wilhelmsen, a renowned shipping company based in Norway, the vessel was one of the largest and most advanced car carriers of its time, with a length of 190 meters and a gross tonnage of 50,000. The ship's design incorporated cutting-edge tech and advanced safety features, ensuring efficient transportation and secure carriage of vehicles across international waters. With the capacity to accommodate over 2,800 cars, the MV Tricolor was a vital component of the global automotive logistics network. On a fateful evening in December 2002, the MV Tricolor encountered a catastrophic collision in the English Channel, resulting in one of the most significant maritime disasters in recent history. The sequence of events leading up to the collision was attributed to a combination of factors, including heavy fog and the failure of the vessel's radar system to detect approaching vessels. The MV Tricolor collided with the container ship Cariba, following a secondary impact with the container ship Clary, leading to severe damage to the Tricolor's hull and subsequent breach in the vessel's structure. The collision resulted in the Tricolor capsizing and sinking, leading to the loss of a significant portion of the 2,800 cars on board. The incident triggered a massive salvage operation to recover the vessel and its cargo, with salvage teams facing considerable challenges due to adverse weather and the precarious position of the ship. The subsequent investigation into the collision revealed critical deficiencies in the navigational systems of the MV Tricolor, and in the end, it was a classic case of human error mixed with bad weather conditions prevalent in the English Channel. The incident underscored the vulnerability of maritime operations to external factors and the necessity of proactive measures to prevent similar accidents in the future. As a result of the MV Tricolor collision, the maritime industry implemented comprehensive safety overhauls and rigorous training programs to ensure the protection of vessels and the preservation of human life at sea. Number 1. The MS Costa Concordia 
the MS Costa Concordia sinking stands as one of the most infamous maritime disasters in recent history. On the evening of January 13, 2012, the Italian cruise liner set sail from Civeta Vecchia, Italy, with over 4,200 passengers and crew members on board its Mediterranean route. However, tragedy struck just hours into the journey. At around 9.45 p.m., the ship under the command of Captain Francesco Schettino deviated from its planned route, sailing dangerously close to a Tuscan island of Diglio. As the ship approached the island, it struck a rock formation, tearing a 160-foot-long gash into the hull along its starboard side. The impact caused a sudden power outage, leaving the vessel adrift and vulnerable to the forces of the sea. Things quickly went from bad to worse. Amidst the chaos, passengers and crew members faced a terrifying reality as the ship listed to one side, leading to mass hysteria. The crew struggled to initiate an organized evacuation, and many passengers were left stranded or forced to navigate their way through dark, flooded corridors. The evacuation process was further hindered by the lack of a coherent and effective emergency response strategy. In short, the situation was a complete mess, much of which was captured on video. Captain Scatino allegedly abandoned the ship prematurely, ignoring his duty to oversee the evacuation. His actions were met with widespread condemnation and legal consequences. As the hours passed, the rescue operations became increasingly challenging, with some passengers resorting to desperate measures, many jumping into the frigid waters to escape the sinking vessel. But in the early morning hours of January 14th, the Costa Concordia had capsized, partially submerged off the coast. The tragedy claimed the lives of 32 people and kick-started a lengthy investigation into what went wrong how it was handled, and into the fact that the captain left so abruptly. I'll see you guys next time. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos. Thank you to our channel members.